the next thing I had another gunshot. Ta ta ta! The crowd, everybody, you know, tried to run. But I was still holding the boy because the bullet hit him on the head. It was after um, two days that we saw him that he passed on. I'm the sister to Ayodunbe, the late Ayodunbe Gabriel Ayola, who died um, from a gunshot during the ENSAS protest last year, October. So we got to know about it after he was already in the hospital 19 days. So um, what happened was that before the incident, that was that should be like on the 19th. So my mom now called him on that um, on Monday morning. So he said he was going somewhere because my mom was hearing the sound of him like he's on the road. So he said that he wants to go get a job because he's somebody that works, he likes working. He's a hard-working person. So my mom was like, ah, with all these protests happening in Nigeria, don't you think you should stay at home for now, that the country is not stable and all, that you should be going back home? So the last time we heard from him was 19th. So on 21st, we started calling him due to the way the country is. So we decided to hear from him to be sure he's also fine. So his number was not going through again. On my way going out that morning, at Ojudu, I saw a crowd, protesters. I didn't join them as like, let me join them in protesting, but I was seeing them. So they were in numbers. I was, I gave them distance. So at the point I was hearing gunshot, I said, ah, this gunshot, I don't need to go through this way. So let me take another side. On getting to Bordland, close to grammar school, I had another gunshot. Then I saw crowd rushing. At a point, I get close, I, I draw closer to that crowd. I saw this very boy. Uh, his name is Gabriel. He was on the floor. I saw him on the floor. He was not dead, but he's still alive. He was still alive. So we tried to beg the policemen at Ujutu Grammar School and Division that we need to carry this boy. He's still alive. Let's take him to the hospital. So the way the police were still holding their gun, everybody were, you know still afraid and scared. From that grammar school, we uh, ran to counting hospital close to Ogba, Abuja. We get the stretcher. Then we managed to carry the boy, put him on that stretcher. We were taking the boy. Then I saw somebody rolling on the floor. The bullet, that gunshot I had, the bullet passed that boy's stomach. But we managed to carry, I, I was so lucky the bullet did not touch me. So I was still shouting, let's carry this boy, let's carry this boy. Then we took him, we ran to, we were taking him to counting hospital, but we saw one um, hospital called Mother and Child. We decided to drop him there. But they said, they just gave him a normal first aid. But they say they can't treat, they can't handle that situation there. Yeah. So I meet, I meet the daughter, I said, please, just write a, a referral for us, which he did. Then with the oxygen, the, with the drip they gave, and uh, we put this boy, Gabriel, inside, and Taiwo, that guy that they shoot, on his face. We took that guy inside the vehicle, both of them, drove them to, we finally end up at Lasso Tikeja. That night, they took him into the theater, they removed the bullet. 
when they removed the bullet, it was they took him. They took him into the emergency ward. But they say we can't see him. We should not allow him to rest. He was still in coma. Later, I begged the doctor that I really need to see this guy. So they asked who am I to him. I said, I'm a good Samaritan. I'm just the guy that brought him yesterday. And I said, what's his name? I said, I don't really know his name. What about his family? I said, I don't know his family. So they, they now told me that they need to do another surgery. They removed the bullet, but the damage the bullet did to the skull, the particles of the skull is lying on top of the brain tissue. That if they did not remove it, did not clean it, at a point of time, it will get decay and fall into the brain. And that will cause another big trouble. Finally, when they brought him out from the theater, they took him to a BT ward. He was there for five days in coma. So I was with him. Then I will play music for him. So I notice when I'm anytime I play music for him, he will sleep very well. When he wake up, he would like to. There was a time he was not moving his fingers. He was moving his fingers. There was a time he raised his hand. So I explained those to the doctor. So the doctor now said, okay, in that case, they are going to carry out an MRI test. So they wrote whatever they need. That the evening of that day they will do it. Then before that time, I was still looking for the family. So I took some pictures of him. Then I made a, made a poster and went back to Bujutu Grammar School. So when I was doing um, some findings, when I got to that place, a girl, one of one girl I met, she explained to me that the DC, the DC of that station was the one doing all the shooting. So I said, okay, if that is the case, since nobody knows the family, let me just post his picture all around. The day that I was like 19, 18 days in the hospital. So the, the pastor said that somebody said he saw a poster of him. That was in the evening, very late in the evening on that day. So my mom now went to the hospital with my dad the next day, early in the morning to last suit. It was after um, two days that we saw him that he passed on. I went into the ward. I meant they covered him with blood. Uh, the next thing they said, they want to take him to the mortuary, to the morgue. Sir, somebody that you guys said you are going to do uh, MRI test, somebody that is even moving his hand, somebody that I would talk to, I would say, open your mouth. He you open his mouth, I will clean his tongue. Finally, they said we should give them time. We waited for close to three weeks. It was December, December 21st. They called us that we should come and carry the, the body. That when, before then, before they called, they said uh, the autopsy is out. They, find, they found out that he died of COVID-19. Okay, if he died of COVID-19, where is he? autopsy result where is to show he said there is no autopsy result before we finally came on the 20th first took him to the uh, very ground and buried him we just buried him like we are burying uh, a chicken he's somebody with a very good art he doesn't actually from what we used to say about him is somebody who doesn't have an enemy Everybody's his friend, no differences. He doesn't segregate anybody, so that's who he is. So we're very close. The last time we saw was at my auntie's place whose husband passed on the year before. So he came then, he was dragging me. I could remember that I was on the chair and he was dragging me playfully. And later I slept off, I went to drag him too, the same way he did to me. So he's a very loving person and he's a cheerful giver. I can't give anybody anything. The system of this country 
and the system the Lagos State gov government uh, operates that period is just too bad. It's just too bad.